Welcome to this first Sunday after Christmas. And I'm delighted that you have joined us online today once again. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Today we have Psalm 148. Hallelujah! Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights. Praise him, all you angels of his. Praise him, all you, all his host. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, all you shining stars. Praise him, heaven of heavens, and you waters above the heavens. Praise let them praise the name of the Lord, for he commanded, and they were created. He made them stand fast forever and ever. He gave them a law which shall not pass away. Praise the Lord from the earth, you sea monsters and all deeps. Fire and hail, snow and fog, tempestuous wind doing his will. Mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars, wild beasts and all cattle, creeping things and winged birds, kings of the earth and all peoples, princes and all rulers of the world, young men and maidens, old and young together. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name only is exalted. His splendor is over earth and heaven. He has raised up strength for his people and praise for all his loyal servants, the children of Israel, a people who are near him. Hallelujah. Blessed are you, Lord our God, creator of heaven and earth. You open our eyes to see the wonders around us and our hearts and mouths to praise you. 
Now give us strength for loving service through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Gospel of Luke, chapter 2, verses 22 to 40. Jesus is presented in the temple. When the time came for their purification according to the law of Moses, they brought him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord, as it is written in the law of the Lord. Every firstborn male shall be designated as holy to the Lord. And they offered a sacrifice according to what is stated in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, looking forward to the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit rested on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Guided by the Spirit, Simeon came into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what was customary under the law, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Master, now you are dismissing your servant in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. And the child's father and mother were amazed at what was being said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to his mother Mary, This child is destined for this falling and the rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be opposed, so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed, and a sword of peace will pierce your own soul too. There was also a prophet, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher. She was of a great age, having lived with her husband seven years after her marriage, and then as a widow to the age of 84. She never left the temple, but worshipped there with fasting and prayer night and day. At that moment she came and began to praise God and to speak about the child to all who were looking for the redemption of Jerusalem. The Return to Nazareth When they had finished everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee to their own town of Nazareth. The child grew and became strong filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. The Gospel of Christ. Of course, the child is here. 
And now of, for the first Sunday after Christmas, we're actually celebrating that the child is here probably well over a month or so. And of what happens in this time, in the obedience of the commands and the ritual purification of mothers after childbirth, Mary and Joseph went to Jerusalem to offer the sacrifice of a pair of doves or two young pigeons. And that is found there, of course, in the readings. And uh, it's as well in our Old Testament reading, Leviticus 12, verses 1 to 8. If a woman, as it's, I quote, if a woman conceives and bears a male child, she shall be ceremonially unclean seven days. As at the time of her men menstruation, she shall be unclean. On the eighth day, the flesh of his foreskin shall be circumcised. Her time of blood purification shall be 33 days. She shall not touch any holy thing or come into the sanctuary until the days of her purification are completed. If she bears a female child, she shall be unclean for two weeks, as in her menstruation, her time of blood purification shall be six to six days. Their offering proves or is a, makes highlights to us that they were poor people who could not afford to offer the lamb that was the usual offering, in, which is found in Leviticus 12, verse 8. For a male belonged to the Lord and had to be redeemed. And that is found in Exodus 13, verse 1 to 2, 1 and 2, and Numbers 18, 15, and 16. And, and I'll just quote it. The first issue of the womb of all creatures, human and animal, which is offered to the Lord, shall be yours. For the firstborn of human beings you shall redeem, and the firstborn of unclean animals you shall redeem. Their redemption price Reckon from one month of age, you shall fix at five shekels of silver, according to the shekel of sanctuary, that is, twenty giraffes. Giraffes are really a weight, weight of, 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 of precious metal. When Jesus arrives in the temple, Simeon too breaks into a song full of the Old, Te Old Testament allusions which announces that with the coming of the Messiah, the old order is to be superseded. I, 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 in fact, I would say turned upside down. Simeon makes three striking claims about Jesus. First, he declares that in Jesus, salvation has come. Then, he borrows an expression from one of the servant passages in Isaiah and calls Jesus a light to the Gentiles and glory to your people Israel. And that's in verse 32. See also Isaiah 49 verse 6. Finally, Simeon prophesies that a sword will pierce the soul of Mary, the mother of Jesus, referring to the anguish she would suffer on Good Friday. So Simeon was speaking in all these prophetic terms as the child entered the temple. Jesus' arrival also answers the prayers of the prophetess Anna. Anna had prayed for the coming of the Messiah as her Old Testament namesake had prayed for the coming of Samuel. In 1 Samuel chapter 1, you'd have, you, when you go to that story, and I invite you to read 1 Samuel chapter 1. It's about this woman who goes in a temple and in deep prayer, prays for a boy, child, a male child. She prays so that her disgrace can be removed. And this child became, Samuel became a, a, a voice of God, a prophet in a huge way. And God hadn't spoken to the people of, of Israel. They hadn't heard from God for about 400 years. He said he was quite, none of his words fell to the ground. In other words, Samuel was not, when he said something was going to happen, it happened. 
just as Hannah had presented Samuel to the, to the Lord, and he continued to grow in stature and in favor with the Lord with, and with men. So it was with Jesus. And just as Hannah and Elkanah returned home to Ramah, so Mary and Joseph returned to Nazareth. Now, this, this Bible passage is really presenting to us, the, the, it's connecting to our reality now. Our reality this first Sunday after Christmas is that yes, we are still in a, a plague, a pandemic. We are in, under further lockdowns. And we understand that these things are necessary. This hasn't taken away our worship in the least bit. What it has done is center us so much on the readings and how much all of who God is is accessible to all who we are. God came to Mary and Mary and Joseph went to the temple and Mary wasn't even able to afford the, 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 the lead, the, to, to offer sacrifice. So they had to resort to what the, the what the most poor people can afford, two pigeons. This year when many of us have had our reimagined worship, we still manage to connect through these means. We are fortunate. We are fortunate for these inventions that we can communicate like this. We come together this day to celebrate the miracle of Christmas, that the Advent hope becomes real. The word indeed has become flesh. For thousands of years, it was prophesied that someone was to come. And finally, he's here, born into the margins of society. And, and there's no more any abstractions, but in fact, the Christ is here. This Christmas, as every Christmas, is filled with hope, joy, expectations, and all. As we stand just a few days from the 2021, I know many of you, like me, are looking forward to getting quickly to 2021. Because somehow 2020 has chosen to, to pack so many things in it. But, one, but we still have those wonders that we, our curiosities are there and our expectations. So what are you expecting? I would love to hear your thoughts. What are your hopes for the season? And perhaps an even harder question, what does hope mean to you? What does it mean to you that Christ indeed came? This Christmas, as every Christmas, is filled with real hope. With real, this, when, when we celebrate Christmas, the word spoken is now flesh in a baby, a child. Yes, so we have been waiting. So we continue to wait. We celebrate the child coming, but we continue to wait with expectation for the next Advent, when Jesus indeed will come. Perhaps you have been waiting to emerge from a time of self-isolation, like all of us are shielded. Perhaps you have been dealing with the uncertainty of waiting to find out about your employment and whether your employer will be able to keep you on in light of the economic uncertainty. Perhaps you have been waiting to see friends and family who have been cut off from you by restrictions. Some have been creative nonetheless and tried to connect through technology. Perhaps you have been waiting for a hug. That I know is, is a big one because none of us can truly hug each other, or a handshake, or just the chance to sing in church once again. We have been indeed waiting. We have been waiting for hundreds of years, a couple thousand years, for the second coming of Christ. So let us continue to celebrate Jesus into our world and make him the focal point of, around which all our expectations are embodied in. Let us give him our praise and adoration. And let us remember why Christ emptied himself of heaven's glory in order to come down 
among us, me, sinful people, and later to die for us. Let us return to the joy of real gift giving at Christmas, the giving of self. God so loved the world that he gave the greatest gift of all, Jesus Christ, his only Son. And as we acknowledge that, may we forever be humble. Amen. Let us pray. God of light, in the birth of your Son we see your glory. May we who share in this mystery grow daily in your love. This we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh. Amen.
Let us join together in praying to Almighty God as we celebrate this great and hum humbling experience. In joy and humility, let us pray to the creator of the universe, saying, Lord, grant us peace. By the good news of our salvation, brought to Mary by the angel, hear us, O Lord. Lord, grant us peace. By the mystery of the word made flesh, hear us, O Lord. Lord, grant us peace. By the birth in time of the timeless Son of God, hear us, O Lord. Lord, grant us peace. By the manifestation of the King of glory to the shepherds and magi, hear us, O Lord. Lord, grant us peace. By the submission of the maker of the world to Mary and Joseph of Nazareth, hear us, O Lord. Lord, grant us peace. By the baptism of the Son of God in the river Jordan, hear us, O Lord. Lord, grant us peace. Grant that the kingdoms of this world may become the kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Hear us, O Lord. Lord, grant us peace. Amen. We call it for the first Sunday after Christmas. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Almighty God, you have shed upon us the new light of your incarnate world. May this light, enkindled in our hearts, shine forth in our lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord's Prayer and Blessing, December 27th. And now let us join together in, as our Savior Christ has taught us, as we are bold to sing, All Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let me leave you with a blessing this morning, especially on this incarnation, as the word has become flesh. So let us join together in celebrating and continuing to celebrate. May the God of infinite goodness scatter the darkness of sin and brighten your hearts with holiness and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.